This is the African News broadcast from Canada. I am Sandra Asante. Headlines Ethiopia signs military deal with Russia. Right group called for release of Ethiopian journalist. Assailant on motorcycles attack village in Niger, killing dozens. Details of these stories after the break. You're welcome back from the break. Thank you so much for staying with me. To a first story, Ethiopia and Russia have signed a military cooperation deal following three days of talks. Ethiopia state-linked broadcaster Fana reported the Ethiopian Defense Forces Finance Division signed a deal which is said will boost long-standing relations between the two nations to a higher degree. The agreement will reportedly focus on improving the National Defense Forces' knowledge, skill, and technical capabilities. Ethiopia's foreign policy alignment has recently shifted to Russia and China as a result of substantial pressure from the U.S. government over the war in the Tigray region. In May, supporters of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed held an anti-U.S. protest in the capital, Addis Ababa, and in Western countries, denouncing President Joe Biden. The protesters applauded Russia's President Vladimir Putin and China's leader Xi Jinping. The Biden administration imposed restrictions on visa and economic assistance to the Ethiopian government over the war. The Ethiopian Foreign Ministry, in response, said. The move was regrettable and could seriously undermine U.S.-Ethiopia relations. To our next Ethiopian story, the campaign group Reporters Without Borders has called on the authorities in Ethiopia to release 12 journalists who were recently detained in a wave of arrest in the capital, Latisa Ababa. The organization said the arrests were clearly aimed at stopping independent investigation reporting on the war in the Tigray region earlier this month the police linked the journalists to the tigray people's liberation front tplf federal troops on the other hand had been battling tplf forces since november the ethiopian human rights commission has also voiced grave concerns at the arrest saying that detainees had to be granted visitation rights by their lawyers or families our next story is in Djibouti and the Djibouti government is planning to sell part of its stake in the state-owned telecoms company, Djibouti Telecom. The government on Sunday launched a tender process for the partial privatization of the company, which is said was a sign of its determination to modernize the economy. The state will offer a minority and significant portion of its shareholding to the first-rate strategic partner, it said in a statement after cabinet meeting to approve the plan. It said the move would help increase the country's global competitiveness and optimize the governance and management of state-owned enterprises. The company is the only telecoms operator in the tiny horn of Africa nation with a population of about 1 million people. The country serves as a gateway to the Suez Canal, one of the world's busiest shipping routes. It is also the main gateway for trade for its giant landlocked neighbor, Ethiopia. We move to South Africa now and South Africa's constitutional court is currently hearing an application by the country's jailed former president to have his sentence overturned. Jacob Zuma started serving a 15-month sentence for contempt of court last week. His legal team is trying one last trick to have his jail sentence overturned. They want the court to set aside both the contempt of court finding and the prison sentence. The former president was taken into police custody on Wednesday last week. His imprisonment has seen an outbreak of protest in two provinces in the country. The protesters who want the former president to be released immediately destroyed properties and looted shops over the weekend and on Monday morning. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has condemned the actions of the protesters. Our final story is in Niger and around 100 heavily armed terrorists riding motorcycles has attacked the Choma Bangyo village striking around 3 p.m. 
Ibrahim Sunday. Niger's Ministry of Defense said in a statement read on public television that it did not identify who it suspected behind the latest deadly incident. The prompt and vigorous reaction by the Defense and Security Forces FGS made it possible to repel the attack and inflict heavy losses on the enemy. The ministry said, adding that its soldiers had seized motorcycles and a cache of weapons, including AK 47s and machine guns, from the assailants. Chumambagyo is located in the Talaberi region, Borden, Mali, and Burkina Faso, an area known for three borders that had been regularly targeted by jihadist groups. Taliberi has been under a state of emergency since 2017. The authorities have banned motorbike traffic night and day for a year and ordered the closure of certain markets suspect of supplying terrorists. One of the poorest countries in the world, Niger, has four-year battled jihadist insurgency on its southwestern flank with Mali as well as Boko Haram on the southern eastern border with Nigeria. The repeated attacks have claimed hundreds of lives and forced thousands to flee their homes. In January, 70 civilians were killed by gunmen in Choma Baguio and 30 in neighboring village of Zaruma Dariye. Last month, 19 people were killed in villages in the same community, according to officials. According to the United Nations estimate, there are more than 300,000 internally displaced people in Niger, mainly of whom fled terrorist violence that had escalated since 2015. Thank you so much for joining me for today's African News. My name is Sandra Asante. I'll see you some other time.